Hi Ahinsters, happy Saturn day. I hope you're keeping safe and well. Welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome to Amhini, a spiritual astrologer. If you like what I do, do consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I do have quite a few new Hinsters, so welcome, definitely welcome and I might make a video at some point just kind of introducing myself to you a little bit more. Um, and also you can find my details below if you're interested in a reading or to inquire about anything. I'm into collaborations at the moment, so if you are interested in what I do, you like what I do, uh, if we intersect in some way uh, with certain topics, then get in touch. My email is below in the description. Alrighty, so we are at another episode of the Streams of Creme Brulee series, <laughs> which is um, uh, or the Venus series, where we track the transits of this silky planet <laughs> through the signs. Now, usually I do this via stream, but my internet is awful, <laughs> exceedingly awful, so I'm gonna actually pre record this episode. But as I film this, Venus is still in Aquarius, according to tropical Hellenistic astrology, which is what I practice, and in about a week's time, Venus will officially enter the mutable water sign of Pisces. But what is Venus? Wait, Venus is this archetype of things like attraction, vibe, the beat, love language, beautification, purification, and also of war. And I am going to credit here the astrologer Alice Sparkly Cat, who I'm going to link in the description as well. Um, I'm going to link to Alice Sparkly Cat's Twitter thread for a sort of very seldom discussed side of Venus, which you might find intriguing, that of war. Um, if you haven't already, I also recommend you watch my Venus in Aquarius stream, so the last episode of this series, so that you can appreciate the energies that Venus will be moving out of, and so that you're staying in the loop of the cosmic conversation and um, not focusing on Venus just in a vacuum. Later this month, I will be releasing my March astrology video where you can get more on the broader cosmic conversation or on that divine dance. And what is Pisces then? As I said at the beginning, Pisces is a mutable water sign. Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, marking the end officially of the astrological year. Pisces is the fish, the two fish specifically, but it's also um, all fish and sea creatures. I feel especially that in this Pisces season, we're embracing or embodying whale energy. <laughs> um, and it's so funny because my last, my most recent sort of videos I've been in this room, which is not my room, but in this room where I'm sort of surrounded by sea creatures, whales and sharks, especially, yeah, Pisces season. <laughs> uh, Pisces is the fish, it's the two fish specifically, um, but like all fish, all sort of sea creatures. And I do feel especially that in this Pisces season, it's about the whale, something huge, something big, um, or bulky, that kind of sea creature, with also the yeah of the ox, the overarching metal ox, in Chinese astrology, those energies starting to begin as well. Um, I think that really gels with a sort of bigger, bulkier whale Piscean energy. Um, and so, yeah, we are welcoming this, a certain state of bloat. Um, it is the, the hanged man in the tarot. I actually drew this card. So, so funny. I actually scripted to talk about the hanged man, but then today I also pulled the hanged man. Uh, this is from Kim Kranz's the wild unknown tarot um, but yeah I think Pisces season every Pisces season is about the hanged man um, to some extent but we um, we are welcoming um, with Venus and now also, of course with the Sun right now in Pisces we are welcoming this um, suspension and also kind of like you're hanging out of a window <laughs> hanging out of a window it's a sort of clean uh, the window on the other side that you can't reach, you know, from the inside. Doing a bit of that, it is a little bit of a spring clean season, Pisces season. It's one of the last sort of um, shedding types of season, but a very gentle shedding, a very simple shedding. And yeah, it's this like sort of stepping back from it all, finally, for the last time, to let it all settle and uh, it kind of makes up your energetic 
bed for a sort of sleep. And Pisces is also kind of like Death Note vibes, if anyone knows Death Note. It's like Death Note vibes and so funny again because I just started watching on Netflix um, Alice in Borderland. Let us know in the comments if you have seen it or if you're watching it right now and uh, kind of what you think of it. A lot of astrologers do associate Pisces with the end and with the world card as well in the tarot. It is also often read to signify ends then and closing chapters and, and Pisces itself. You know when we get the, the world card it can be a Pisces <laughs> in your life that is being represented. Pisces is also an inward sign and so the sort of eight of wands, Aquarius seasonal energy that I've been mentioning in my last few videos, that eight of wands energy I think is going to start to die down a bit and Venus lessens our desire to speak up about things or to speak against things and we sort of attract less things suddenly but in a more sort of intuited slumber because of course Pisces still allows for mysterious attraction it's just that we are more akin to the original wishes like like we call in spirit before sleeping to give us a certain type or tone of dream. And so when we fall asleep, we are so enveloped in that blanket, internally uh, and deeply manifesting. Pisces season represents the beginning of a vibe of hibernation. <laughs> uh, and with the, as I said before, the metal oxier energies just beginning, this can really set us up on the right first footing in some sense onto that soft and special road that lies just ahead now. So Venus will invite us to pleasure ourselves with simple sleep and with the with the sun also as I mentioned still uh, already right now being in Pisces there will be an increasing bright sweetness and excitement about sleep. Uh, both literally and spiritually as we put our heads on a soft pillow in excited anticipation of the day to follow, the um, adventures that await us in our waking life. We are, of course, right about now, dreaming of the spiritual spring that is marked by Aries season. And we're even looking a little bit to Belkana, um, that's how I know it to be pronounced, but um, it looks like it's Beltane, but um, we're even kind of looking towards that, um, which is celebrated sort of in the middle of Taurus season. Um, Taurus being one of Pisces sort of sextile energies. And you know, with Venus being exalted in Pisces, sleep and um, all that is sweet is so easy in this season, so beautiful. And we can be so nice to ourselves and our dreams and the world and to each other and we can kind of sprinkle magic <laughs> onto even the most sort of mundane entities or the most mundane sort of relational types of things. Speaking of relationships then um, and in the way again that we relate to all things concrete and abstract because Venus isn't just about your social relationships it's about um, relating itself as a thing. And so Venus and Pisces will encourage us, I feel, to look at something while not looking at it. <laughs> uh, like um, in that Hanged Man card, you can see here, or in other decks, like the Hanged Man is often represented, um, or like a person who does not make eye contact with you, yet who is listening or hearing or, or who is feeling water, feeling you. So it is like looking at the lens or, or the green light during your sort of Zoom call. <laughs> I'm sure most of us are familiar with this um, and not at the actual image of the other um, people you're connecting to on that Zoom call. So it's a very like odd, weird thing you're connecting, but not. So yes, it's odd. Um, it's as though we connect on some other level, as though one of the Pisces fish is in that Zoom call, but the other is far, far off in some Neverland. Um, it's also a season though, generally, of listening while looking away, of um, contemplating rather than confronting 
mm, whatever there is left to be said. Already having surrendered to the sanctity of time's end and the end of a cycle of also the the last words of a thick chapter we're sort of um accepting those last words that last sentence and i think we we want not to distress ourselves anymore with the nitty gritty but to zone out away and um through the borders even to disappear like the mist that a heavy hand sort of tries to grasp. We will be seeking to evade, and that can sometimes be seeking to evade predators, the uh, predative, um, and, and seeking to escape the unsound. One interesting thing about Venus and Pisces is that some people will easily engage themselves in magical warfare. So Piscean energy is truly this kaleidoscope that can present itself in soft twinkly hues or in sort of blood red absorbing sharp shapes <laughs> and all kind of at the quickest um, slightest twist of the hand so there is a certain twistedness to piscean energy that's not often talked about um, um but think of it like fairy tales a lot of fairy tales have so much, especially the contemporary or modern interpretations, have so much magic and romance uh, sort of um, kind of coated over them. But the origins of a lot of fairy tales are very, very dark, very dark. Um, and this is kind of Piscean energy as well. Um, you know, sometimes we will twist the hand um, or change what the lens uh, presents to us just out of boredom or out of a deadly curiosity. You know, Piscean energy is quite often, or Pisceans are quite often associated with things like photography. And it is often said that the, the photograph never lies, but actually it can lie. <laughs> the photographer can lie. And things can be presented and captured in a certain way from a certain angle, but that's not actually the whole story. Yes, we can tell stories through photography um, or video or film, but we have to be careful as well with um, not being able to see beyond the frame or even see who's behind that camera. And it really is one of these all that glitters is not gold sort of lessons wherein we may need to protect ourselves from seemingly sweet gestures that cloak a poison or a malice. And you know, the spirits that we fight with um, and the, the spaces that we sanctify uh, in this Venus and Pisces transit, because sanctification, um, war, fighting, Venus, Vini, Venus, Venusian <laughs> things, um, in this Venus and Pisces transit, they are those of the jaguar or the panther um, or entities, archetypes like the the um uh the vampire right the vampire the bat the blood bat <laughs> um, but also the tiger shark you know um these things that are obscured in the densest hollows and the kind of murkiest of depths yet in an instant which spring upon out of those shadows um onto clueless victims, <laughs> um, onto those who found false security, or even um, romance or exoticism <laughs> um, in the green of the trees or the blue of the waters. Our vibe will easily turn us toward temptation with Venus in this sign as though we're in a kind of sweet shop <laughs> and some of us will step into sort of sticky traps or sort of false uh, sanctities if that's a word false sanctities um, and a lot of us will be faced with the choice of that sweet safe slumber before the spring um, or a premature throwing of caution to the wind that turns uh, the mysterious into the menacing and Pluto is still in Capricorn. Let's not forget that Pluto is still in Capricorn and so there's still this um, element of how Capricornian things go back to my Venus and Capricorn video if you want. 
um, or to my December, was it my December astrology video? Maybe. Uh, check that out if you want, where I think I talk more about Capricorn energies. But Pluto's still there, and so there's still a very much underlying background hum of the ways in which the crocodile energies, the devil energies, can ensnare us in uh, seemingly innocent ways. So sleep is the beat here. We are best off diving into music or like good films or like creating art, especially art that's just for ourselves. Um, or even art that you create as gifts of compassion, compassionate gifts. I'm going to talk about this a bit more in my March astrology video, so watch out for that. But there's certain um, selfless giving of Pisces season, selfless gifting of Pisces season that you might like to channel through art right now, or as Venus goes through Pisces. You might be attracting more of these selfless little gifts, magical little trinkets, little little things, little gestures. But anyway, things that don't have a sort of projected purpose, right, or a motive. You might want to fall into things like poetry, reading poetry, writing poetry, whatever it is that brings us a kind of rest that's also somehow artful. You know, unlike Jupiter's other side, Sagittarius, it doesn't have to be a vibe of fierce sort of running through forests to find knowledge. Um, with Pisces, it's found in the simple act of sitting in your garden with a book or just closing your eyes or going, just, just going through photographs in old albums um, as you're sat on the floor or in this sort of simple state of like an innocent mix of playing music and drinking a little wine, a bit of Irish coffee, um, with no particular sort of audience even, just you and your piece. It's like, it's very much with Pisces season. And again, I'm gonna talk more about this in my March astrology video, but very much more about just being sat in that forest as opposed to the restless sort of rushing through it. Um, it's being sat there in a grove, maybe, um, in a field, maybe, like playing a flute, <laughs> spiritually speaking, or just watching the clouds, or just like closing your eyes. It's that kind of vibe. That brings you peace and rest. With Venus and Pisces, the flow is just that. The flow is going with the flow. The vibe is this power of passive spontaneity, of letting go, and also of letting that which you desire come to you. Or perhaps more accurately, letting yourself surrender to the knowledge, the Kens, that what is desired will come to you. And that's one of the, the, the tricks, the beautiful tricks of Piscean energy, this knowledge that it's all gonna come to you. Now, with Venus and Pisces, some of us could get much hornier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, porn, sexual fantasies, these kinds of things can run wild. Venus is hot, hot desire, passion. <laughs> uh, hotter than Mars, remember. Venus is hotter than Mars. And some of us will have deceitful desires that are in some cases, for some of us, just imagined, but even that is dangerous. Um, for others, they are actually acted on. Either way, we can easily, at this time, not know when to stop and sort of wear ourselves out. This is exalted energy. And with exalted energy, we often, um, as great as it is, it can easily um, exhaust us. Pisces energy is also kind of like the angler fish and so we may have to be careful that the um, wild and adventurous desires we have are not going to consume us um, and that we sort of throw pebbles into puddles before we go jumping in. Channeling just a little bit, just a smidgen that Virgoan discernment. Virgo is the opposite of Pisces in the zodiac, this axis. Um, channel just a little bit of that discernment amidst all of the sort of Disneyland energy. You know, um, Pisces, 
as the world card and as the last sign of the Mesopotamian zodiac, it is representative of an all encompassing sort of vibing with both the good and the evil in the world due to the the stick or the cord which keeps together the two fish. Now in Greek myth, for example, this um, cord is what kept Aphrodite and her son Eros together after they sort of jumped into the water and um, transformed into fish, depending on which version of the myth. But there is then, in many ways, during this transit, an ultimate knowing of what is bad, yet a curiosity which is always tugging the fish toward um, that bad thing, and always, at least in part, uh, captured by what is bad, or captivated, shall we say. So then, this Venus and Pisces season, quite unsurprisingly, might make us, um, in our relationships, uh, or again, in the way that we relate to anything, um, more susceptible to gossip, to toxicity, to cheating, to lying. And also, this does, Venus going through Pisces, present a dissolution of boundaries within relationships, so watch out for that. There is a certain premature restlessness as well that can spoil the excitement before sleeping, that excitement, right, of Pisces season, that sleep before the Aries season, jump into the world, the new world. You know, we can spoil that anticipated momentum of the pure and the true spiritual spring to come. Ultimately, to end then, I feel this Pisces, uh, this Venus and Pisces transit has nice potential to bring us a bit of bliss um, a feeling of highness. A lot of us literally will be getting high. <laughs> and um, inner desires and wishes will be met, or at least there'll be this knowledge of desires and wishes being visible or um, within sight. And that sort of the happiness, the excitement, the, de the, the desire to um, keep going or preserve uh, will increase. So check your birth chart and let me know which house or houses you have Pisces in. Um, I'd love to hear how this transit plays out for you specifically. So leave a comment down below. I'm wishing you all the very best of wishes and that you stay safe and well. And I'll see you next time. Slam.